Welcome back to another one of Nathan Bell's Centurion videos. Uh, we're hitting 83, this is the 83rd video. Like, share, subscribe, do all those things, but today, Nate wants to talk to you about his time when he was a young fella as a mental health advocate. Yeah, yeah. well I had a new number of psych cases when I was in my late teens, um, and then I, was, uh, I got involved with the mental health service steps to support through early psych cases. And I was with them, this was before the NDIS existed, uh, a number of years before the NDIS existed, and I was with Steps for a few years. Anyway, at one time Steps came to me, the people I worked with at Steps came to me and said, uh, there's this conference in Sydney uh, and we're looking for a, a consumer, someone who works with us to speak from a client perspective. So anyway, I prepared a speech because um, I've always been quite good at English and expressing my ideas. So I prepared a speech um, and then I went to the conference in Sydney some weeks later and gave the presentation. And anyway, as they had promised me, I was paid like $100 to do it. Uh, and so I said to them afterwards, you know, I'd like to do more of this. I've always been very community orientated and activism orientated. So I wanted to get involved. So anyway, then they they went about over the next year organising multiple other opportunities for me to go and speak at conferences, mental health conferences, disability conferences, about my experience um, with mental illness and psychosis and also my experience working with people in the mental health system. So, you know, I did several more talks uh, and then it progressed further and they started to offer me opportunities to do training um, and I did some training. I did one course called Compelling Presenter Speak uh, Secrets, um, which, are not, which was attended by a bunch of professionals in mental health. And I learned a lot from that course. And I did other courses. I did the collaborative recovery model. Uh, they wanted me to work with clients uh, and work as an advocate. So I started to do all this training and, 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 I, and I attended numerous conferences. One time I was asked to speak to a group of psych registrars, so they're just finishing their degree in psychiatry. There was about 20 of them. And I only spoke to them for half an hour and I was paid $500. Uh, of course, I didn't do it for the money. I did it because I wanted to contribute to the mental health community. Um, but it was excellent that I was getting paid at the time to do it as well. Uh, and I'd always write my own speeches and I was allowed to express my views freely, even things that I disagreed with in the mental health system. They encouraged me to voice my complaints because that's what advocates do. You know, we work on the fact that we have a right to complain if we're not satisfied with how things are working in the relevant institution. Uh, we are regulators uh, and we come in with our right, our legal right to complain and to shake things up and to say we want a better result. That's what advocacy is all about, um, depend for whatever community you're advocating on behalf of. Um, so yeah, I went about doing these talks uh, and do speaking at these conferences for many years. I spoke at the Mental Health Walk of Pride two or three times. Uh, spoke at events for the Black Dog Institute, spoke at all these different events, often got paid, um, did numerous training, uh, and it was fantastic. Even at one point, um, I was, uh, this was about maybe, must have been nearly 12 years ago now, but I think it was under the Rudd government, I was asked to meet with, and I can't remember whether it was the state health minister or the federal health minister, uh, but I was asked to meet with one of them, uh, and I met with that minister uh, with several other people, uh, representatives from mental health and the mental health system up at um, the old James Fletcher Hospital and we spoke about ways forward for um, progressing mental health. Um, so, you know, I did a lot of this ag advocacy work for about five years I did it um, and it was a very rewarding time in my life. Came to the end of it, I decided that I just felt my life was consumed in mental illness and talk about mental health and disability and I became disenfranchised with that and wanted to progress on to other things and so I did and I left it behind um, and I'm a bit regretful of that because I think I probably could have progressed a lot further in that field of advocacy. One time I was asked whether I would like to work as the formal advocate up at the James Fletcher Barracks building and I was encouraged to go for that job position. Uh, I didn't go for that job position because it was around the time I was deciding I wanted to move on. So I'm a bit regretful that I 
didn't progress that career as an advocate further and do more work in that area. It could have been a good role for me because I am a good advocate. Um, but I was very satisfied with the work that I did uh, and the opportunities I was given in the time. And I met lots of fantastic people. I made some money. I got to practice being a public speaker. It's probably why I'm such a good speaker now because I have that background of doing extensive public speaking. At the time, I was also on NBN News. I, I spoke on many years ago, about 12 years ago, I spoke on NBN News as an advocate on Natasha Bayersdorf's Mind Matters series. And at the time, many years ago, about 12 years ago, I appeared on ABC Radio to talk about um, mental health advocacy as well. So I did many things and had many commitments and did a great deal of um, work as an advocate and was very seriously involved in it. Um, so it was an exciting time and I encourage people, you know, be passionate about issues because I'm just a passionate guy. I'm all about expressing yourself and expressing your views because I'm a Democrat. It's like we have a right and, and to some extent we have an obligation to participate in society and to be a part of the community actively through politics, advocacy and activism. Um, so that's what I wanted to tell you about being an advocate and the work I did as an advocate and some of the stuff I did. So drop a comment in the comment section about your views on advocacy. Do you support people advocating their views or are you one of these dictators who wants to silence everyone? Um, thanks, guys.